<laughs> I am a huge fan of Kerodo Gunso, known as Sergeant Frog in America. It is by far one of the best madcap comedies that you can find, in cartoon form at least, out on the airwaves right now. Three, two, one. For those of you who have sadly never seen this show before, you should go watch it right now. The plot concerns a small troop of frog-like aliens who, after a failed attempt at reconnaissance on Earth, or Peckapon as they call it, are stranded there and have only each other and an oddball family of humans as their allies. And thereby, they decide that they are going to take over the world on their own. Which leads to all sorts of hijinks that basically forms the backbone of the entire series. And the series itself has proven quite successful, approaching the 400 episode mark in Japan right now. Now despite its success overseas, I was really convinced that this series would never come over to America, mostly because of just how Japanese the series really is. I mean, there are quite a few jokes in it that rely entirely on Japanese wordplay. And I was so convinced it wasn't coming over, I actually imported the first three parts of the series on DVD all the way from Asia. But unfortunately, this is really just proof that I should not be in the stock market. Now, to date, only the first three seasons of Sergeant Frog have been licensed, and only the first two have been released, but I am hopeful that we'll be seeing more of the series in the future. I may go and give the entire series a full review at a later date, but there really isn't a whole lot to say about it, mostly because it's a basic madcap comedy at its core. However, there is one thing that I can talk to you about, and that's our subject for today. The music. This is the Kerodo Gunso OST. The first one, anyway. I'm not even kidding when I say there are a ton of albums based on the music from Kerodo Gunso. And most of them are actually pretty easy to find, even in America, or through sites like Amazon. But the real big thing here is that most of them are not for incidental music from the series. Instead, most of them are just for the openings, endings, and the incidental show tunes that show up now and then within the show itself, like the birthday song or More Peach Summer, both of which are actually on this original soundtrack that I'm reviewing today. To start off, I will say that I love the design of the cover. While you can't see the name of the album here, it does do a good job portraying the goofy nature that the show is going for. And here on the back, you get a great screenshot from the show's first New Year's episode, showing off all of the main characters and the omniscient narrator. The booklet is also fairly impressive. It's once again just basically a booklet containing the lyrics to all the songs, but this one differentiates itself by at least having some interesting aesthetics, as well as some great artwork and screenshots from the show itself, whether it be from the opening or ending that the song is used in, or just showing a few scenes from the episode where the song was featured. The disc itself is also pretty good too, it at least gives us something different to look at, Mostly the platoon there in their usual line salute, and a small picture on the top depicting them with artistic supplies. Before we move on, I should also note that this is one of those CDs that is not automatically translated when you put it into iTunes. All of the song and artist names remain in their local Japanese, with one or two exceptions, so you will have to translate the names yourself if you want to keep track of them. So, with all of that out of the way, we can now get to what you people care about, and that is the song selection. I will say that it's kind of disappointing to only have 11 tracks on this CD, but for what we were given, they chose some of the best songs from early on in the show's run. Not only just the good openings and endings, one of the most standouts being the original opening, Kero to March. Kero, 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 but it also takes great advantage of the show's instrumental tunes and also some of the incidental songs that show up in a few of the episodes. One of my favorite is a jazzy little Christmas tune that they kept on the album.
Now, not all of the songs on the CD are that peppy. Some of them actually take a bit of a slower approach, one of my favorites being an army march done by Corporal Giroro, the platoon's resident gun nut. <laughs> Heck, the album even throws in some disco-centric tunes, which are actually fairly important to the show's identity. Both of these songs that happen to be on the album are performed by a character known as Dance Man, who not only performs the songs, but also happens to be a recurring cameo character in the show itself. And the best known tune of his is actually the show's first ending, Afro Gunso. At this point, I should also highlight what I find to be the standout song of the album. And it's actually a pretty big contrast to most of the other music because it's the slowest one on the CD. I usually don't go for the slowest one on the CD, but in this case, it's one of the most emotionally heartfelt songs that was ever featured on the show, and as such, I think it stands out quite a bit. It's the birthday song, 623 Mix. Now, in the few of these OST episodes that I've done before, I've mostly talked about the positives, usually only highlighting the negatives where it concerns the album itself rather than the selection of music on it. But there is one song on this album that I legitimately do not care for and skip almost every time that I listen to this CD. Which is kind of strange, because this is usually the kind of song that I go for. It's a very poppy, very peppy, very bouncy kind of tune. It's the same kind of tune that you'd expect to be playing at the beginning of an anime. However, this is one that I just cannot get into, I'm afraid. And, well, just, just listen to it. I wish I knew why I didn't like this song so much, because for the situation it's used in in the show, it's actually very fine, it's actually very funny, but the song by itself just doesn't seem to have any staying power. But I'm not going to go on rambling about the song itself, I'm not Todd in the Shadows or anything. Or am I? No, no, it doesn't work. But anyway, that's my evaluation of this album and the final verdict. If you're a fan of the show, or if you're a fan of J-pop in general, this is definitely a must-have. It has some great musical range, from jazz to J-pop to J-rock to even a slow soldier ballad, and the birthday song, which is excellent, and with only one song that I didn't really care for, plus uh, the fact that there are only 11 songs on the album, well, those are very minor shortcomings, and I'm sure all of you will be able to forgive them. With all that said, of course, I do also have to say that you should check out most of their other albums as well, because if there's one other complaint I can make about this, it's the fact that it's missing out on a lot of the songs that came later down the show's run, like You 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 or Harilu Michi, which are two of my favorite songs from the show itself, aside from the birthday song. <laughs> Yeah, that's some nice stuff. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you all Excuse me a minute. Hello?
What's that? Repeat everything you say so we don't have to worry about showing the other side of the conversation? This guy of four is being released next September? Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> you